there's never a good time to, you know, I always thought that there wasn't a good time to come back to a podcast, to do a podcast. And 2024 is new. It's fresh. I've been trying to find time to record podcasts, and I got a couple in the bank. But this one I felt was very, very important for one reason or another. And WrestleMania had their kickoff yesterday out in Las Vegas at the T-Mobile Arena, and we're going to discuss it right now. My man to the right doesn't need too much of an introduction. Writer for Bleacher Report, <laughs> fan side of DDT. To me, no no offense to Reg, I, I love Reg, but the star of the Grand City Podcast on Fightful, the Get Fightful YouTube here. channel, <laughs> it wanted only Phil Lindsay and get into wrestling we're both in chicago what are the bears going to do here are the bears taking are the bears going to draft caleb williams are they going to go with stick with justin fields uh i hope they don't draft caleb williams i think that they should stick with justin um i think they should draft a receiver if it's my opinion on the same page here this is brilliant this is brilliant why do you think that is a why why are you so much on why are you on the receipt, not on the Caleb Williams train like a lot of people are starting to get on? Um, I think Caleb Williams starting out looked like the number one pick. He looked like the, you know, next big quarterback. Uh, but the way his college career ended left some questions for me. Uh, and that's not to say I don't think that he'll still be good, but I think um, in terms of what we have, and in terms of the situation, you still have your coach. There's still some reservations on if you're going to keep him moving forward. Um, I would say just finish out Justin's contract for now because, I mean, let's not – let's just say you bring in another quarterback and then you bring in another coach eventually. The coach is going to want to bring in their guy. So, I don't know, man. I, I would just see what you have with uh, Justin for the remainder of his contract and then think about shifting personnel later. No, I agree with that. I agree with that 150%. And I'm a, and I'm just a Justin guy. Like I, I got two kids. They, they're all about number one. They're all about the Dunkin' Donuts commercials. And they're all about seeing him doing stuff with the kids. And it's like, and they look at, they're like, oh, and they're going to get replaced with this guy. And they're like, wait, no, we're not going to bear stink if they're going to do this. And I'm like, yeah, you're not really wrong. But I'm hoping and praying we do get they do stick with Justin Fields. They trade them, like you said, take Marvin Harrison Jr. There's a there's a lot more help they need quarterback. That that's who my dad wants them to pick, by the way. He wants them to pick Marvin. And that's my and I don't disagree with him. I would that pick makes all honesty the most sense at this stage of the game. So but we'll see what the Bears do. But the reason we are doing this. The reason that I do want to bring, I decided to bring the podcast back right now. I was going to wait a week, but the WrestleMania kickoff show recap. And that all happened yesterday. It's been a ride since last Friday. And before we even got to yet the Thursday, what were your thoughts, Phil, just on the rock coming out? the world saying I'm gonna fa- I'm gonna face you at WrestleMania Cody giving up his spot what did you make initially of how that was presented uh I did not like it I thought the execution of it didn't work um I don't think it makes sense to have Cody win back-to-back rumbles and basically dangle this idea of a rematch in front of fans just for him to come out six days later and go I don't want it here the Rock's going to take my spot. And even even if he didn't outright say that, that's what it looked like. You visually had your Royal Rumble winner come on TV and step aside for someone else. And I just don't think that works. It, that was like, I, I'm watching it. And I didn't watch, did you watch it live? Yes. See, I didn't watch it live. Every Friday night we do a movie night. And... I put my phone, my phone was very far in the kitchen. I had it on silent. I didn't want to. And then, like, I looked, it was about half 
after nine o'clock central, and I looked at my phone, and there, everyone's like, Kurt, you gotta watch, have you watched SmackDown? And I'm like, I'm getting DMs, and I'm getting talk to different people in wrestling, and I'm like, I get no clue what you're talking about. I'm like, I'm gonna watch the whole show, and then, so that's what I did. And I just screamed, I was like, I got excited, because I'm not watching, I'm watching as a fan. Mm-hmm. Order head isn't fully on, so I'm, I'm watching and I'm like, okay, this is really cool. I'm ex- like out there, the confrontation we want to see, and then here comes, then here comes Dwayne, and it's like, all right, I'm in. I didn't even I wasn't thinking, no, nah, Cody's getting screwed because I felt like. End of the day, WWE is going to do this right now. And I told you that. And I'm like, and mm-hmm. I really felt this is still their guy. He's just making a little shit. That's okay. That story is going on a lot longer. And no offense to Cody, that story is going on a lot longer than Cody has presented since he returned almost two years ago. And that's kind of where I felt about it. So I didn't think about it. Then Saturday morning, I wake up and it turned into something I we were talking about off air, just about we haven't seen this since 2014 with Daniel Bryan and the rejection of the WrestleMania 30 main event of Batista and Randy Orton. Did you were you getting that vibe at all? Like you're seeing this all play out that we want Cody hashtag and everyone media personalities. In wrestling, and even outside of wrestling, George Kittle was taught, was asked about it during Super Bowl Media Day. Were you feeling that same groundswell or no? Um, it feels similar, but see, the thing that makes it different is um, there was no point where it felt like Brian was going to get that match until fans start saying they wanted it. Um, for a year, we thought that was the match. Not just for a year, we thought that was the match, but coming out of Royal Rumble weekend, that sure seemed like the match because uh, it looked pretty familiar. Cody Rose did the two sweet, pointed at the sign, and then he immediately turned around and pointed at Roman Reigns. There was no question on who he wanted to challenge. There was no question as to why he wanted to win the Royal Rumble because we knew what he wanted. We knew he wanted a rematch. And so to get to SmackDown and then all of that is just like, ah, well, forget about that for now. No, you've been telling us to wait for a year for this. I don't want to. And it's not that I don't want the Rock Roman match. I think the Rock Roman match is a moment. And we have been waiting for for that for four years. But if I've been watching your show for the past year and hoping that we get back to this Cody story, I'm kind of wondering, like, hey, what are we doing? (laughs) Yeah. And and you've, you've pounded that into me. Like... At first you said it, and I'm looking, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, And then, like, the more you said it, talking to different people in wrestling, like, I understood. Like, the point is, it's 100% valid. The argument isn't wrong. And I remember going back, and going back with you, and I looked at it like, business. Yeah, of course. And this isn't, my look at it was two ways. One, and I've gotten blasted for saying this on social media. I'm going to get blasted for this, making it right here. And that's perfectly fine. I'll accept it. It's the biggest money match they can make. And people are like, oh, no, they're going to sell tickets. And yeah. They op- they're opening up more tickets. More people are going to be watching on Peacock. And the most important thing people really aren't talking about, they're going to make more sponsorship money by the fact that saying our main event. And people say, oh, he's had a couple flops in movies. Look at his TV show. It only lasted four years. Not he's still enough. the biggest movie star in the world. The richest actor the highest grossing actor the biggest following on social media the biggest money match you can make it's literally the last dream match as of right now this company can make for the uh, for the foreseeable future 
and, and, and until Punk gets healthy and we get the option of Punk versus Roman. But still, um, your point is valid. Rock is the biggest star to come out of WWE. He is he is a massive star. Um, one of the most, not even one of, the most recognizable wrestler in the world. Like the most <laughs> famous wrestler in the world. Can't hear you, buddy. No, still can't hear you. There we go. I unmuted myself there for a second. I had lost my, my AirPods died, unfortunately. I don't know why. But I look at it in terms of, and also, maybe WWE didn't see Cody strong enough. Even though all the the barometers are there. Merch. Selling tickets. Doing all the make-a-wishes, the charities. Do, being the company guy. Maybe there was also something Endeavor looked at and they were like, we're not sold. Yeah, I can see that, but... I don't agree with it, but yeah. putting... Going with what their what their line of thinking was it is or was at that time it was like okay i can i can totally get it from where they were coming from i think they were wrong but i can look at it in, from a business sense it, to me it did make sense uh yeah and i mean but see i think when you're talking about fans and pants fans are in their in their feelings fans never hear want to hear what's best for business i mean that was the tagline for one of the biggest villains in the history of the company so the fans don't want to hear that uh the fans want what they want and i think if you tell them uh for the better part of a year that the most plausible threat to roman reigns is cody rhodes then that's the match they want to see Well, when does it come to a point where you have to not just cater to your audience? You, you got to try to build your audience. You have, uh, your, you have your audience already there. Anywhere from, depending on the show, anywhere, we'll talk about Raw and SmackDown, anywhere from 1.7 to about 2.3 million viewers. The goal should always be to expand your audience and not just cater to the people that are going to watch you every week, watch the videos on social media. It should be about trying to expand your base from wrestling. Yeah. Well, how do you, how do, how does a company find that balance of catering to your audience, but also realizing wrestling's already seen a downturn in terms of fans. How do we grow? How did, how do you think they can find that balance is, because you're catering to two different types of people here. And from what we've seen yesterday, it seems like they shifted back to catering to their core audience, it seems like. Um, I think it says something uh, about how much wrestling fandom has changed. Because, um, I mean, even when you think about Edge winning the Royal Rumble, uh, was that 2021, right? 2021, 2022, whichever year that was. When, yeah. when, when yeah. Edge came back and won the Royal Rumble, um, they had to turn him heel because the fans turned on it. Um, this isn't the same fan base that just wants to see part timers show up and get the big match. They want they're there for the story. Um, if you tell me for the past year, we're here for the bloodline story. That's the biggest thing we've got going. That's the hottest storyline we've had possibly ever in this company. And that's what brought the fans in. Then trust your storyline. You can't then also tell me we're doing better business than we've we've done in a long time like the 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 buys for pay-per-views are up um you're selling tickets out the, out the wazoo merch sales are up and the guy that's at the forefront of that the guy that is at the precipice of that is cody rhodes and then also tell me well that doesn't matter because rock is going to do even better business yeah but you're already doing good business with this guy this guy is the face of your company and you're making good money you're doing great business so I don't understand then saying, ah, well, that's good, but The Rock. <laughs> I mean, I do get it because it's money. And as we know with corporations, yeah, that's cool. 
but I want even more money. Like I and, and I get that, but it's just like it's not like they were in a down period like that. It's not yeah. like WWE is doing poorly. No, but how much is that also? And you hear this often. You hear this with UFC, the brand. Mm-hmm. And WWE's made it a point just because talent leaving Austin rock Austin with more injuries, but you didn't see Steve much after he retired, you know, you know, Hogan Mm -hmm. rock, uh, Cena, Batista, their biggest stars. And I, I think you're Brock Lesnar. You're you, now you're seeing it more with Roman Reigns. It's to where, they don't want to get anyone too big for the brand. The yeah. brand takes, pre- like you said, precipice. The brand takes precipice over the Cody's, the Seths, you know, the guys that are, you know, the Bailey's and the Charlotte Flair's and people of that nature. How much of it is the brand? Like, how much credit should we give the bloodline? How much credit should we give Cody Rhodes? Um, I think for a long time you have to give the credit to the brand because that's what WWE wanted. WWE wants you to be there for the spectacle of don't going to a WWE show. And that's a big part of the appeal of WrestleMania. It's the brand. Um, but I also think that that's what became refreshing about Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns felt like a guy that was the biggest individual star that that company's had in a long time. Um, and I also think that that's part of what made Cody coming in feel refreshing. He didn't feel like anybody on the brand. He didn't feel like just a, another cog. He felt like a guy that came in and immediately felt like a top guy. You know, and you're so spot on because, you know, you look at, you talk about when did the business really, for them, for WWE, started experiencing an uptake was when he came in. And that's where I give him a lot of credit because you can say how he was booked in AEW. He had something to do with it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But you got to give a good chunk of that to the guy on top, and that's Tony Khan. You have to give – Cody gets his fair share of blame for that because I think he he booked himself into a shoot, and (laughs) he didn't put himself in a really good position because of that. Yeah. And – but – Tony had a lot to do with that as well. There, there, I think there's equal blame to go on. You could probably give more to Tony because he's the yeah. one that signs off on everything. I mean, then he comes here and it's like, people are like, this was the guy in AEW. They saw him as a, and it proved the point. He was the face of AEW. And that's for another conversation, but that's how fans perceived it. And look at, look at what happened. For WWE, as soon as he got there, I was there hell in a cell when he faced Seth. That was my kid's first ever wrestling show. Wow. And my oldest looked at me and he's like, Dad, what's wrong with Cody? And I had to explain. He's like, why doesn't he take a break? Why is he doing this? And trying to explain it at the time of <laughs> a five-year-old, but he was in on Cody. And he's still in on Cody. Yeah. And... And I explained it to him, and he un- and he and he understood, and and that's where I look at it is like he came back. Yeah, the wheel was still going. The bloodlines, you know, you look at what was going on with Sammy. You know, you, you have to see, you have to give a lot of credit to Sammy. You got to give a lot of credit to the bloodline. That whole storyline's been done really great. Yeah. But then Cody came back and didn't miss a beat, and the, the business kept going up, and. I give him a lot of that credit. Yeah, you got to give the brain some of it because people love WWE. It's it is the brand in wrestling. Yeah, I mean, but it was such a hard decision. I feel like for them, for WWE, to be like, what do we do here? One hand, you got this guy who's been the ba- the face of the one of the your biggest baby face in a very very long time. And then you got this guy, the biggest movie star in the world, the guy that made, got us, quite frankly, the attitude of the earth got them to the point they are now, and he was neck and neck with with Austin. So I could see where 
I can see where this was a hard decision. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't begrudge the decision they originally made. I don't because I, I can get it from a business sense. I get the fans were upset. The media personalities were <laughs> the Cody crybabies is, oh God. is the rock is the rock said the Cody cry. Oh God. The fan, I, I, I leaned on that one, but then we get, this all gets in to what we saw at the kickoff and extremely well done. I thought that was, I don't know if you talk to media there, like what, I've talked to a few. I've talked to some people in WWE, but from what you were been able to gauge, Phil, how was everything received on your end from people you talked to and just the vibe you got from watching the show? Um, I think that they had a tough situation going into Thursday night um, because this, I won't say it was unanimously uh, pan decision, uh, but there was a very big vocal outcry against the execution of this decision. And I think some of that is, uh, some of that is, is, is the mechanisms behind this. I mean, you've got a guy that is on the board of directors coming in and putting himself in the big match uh, versus a guy that in character has been this guy that has, has been not making any excuses for a year, has not been, you know, has not stopped at any obstacle faced Brock Lesnar three times, got through all of these things to get back to the point. So yeah, uh, in, in storyline, we want to be behind that guy and not the business guy, not the corporation guy. Um, but I think the, I, I think it was, <laughs> I think there were things about it that I think worked really well. I think it was an odd decision to not have Bailey on this at all, uh, especially cause that was the first match announced for WrestleMania. Um, and she was a Royal Rumble winner. So I thought that was an odd decision. That was one of the glaring things that stood out for me. But I thought they did a very good job with the Becky and Rhea stuff. Um, mm -hmm. That's clearly looking like the match going forward. Uh, Becky, of course, added herself to the Elimination Chamber match. Um, I, I thought Biggie and Punk were great on commentary. Um, you can see why that rumor has been floating around that they want Punk to do commentary because um, it seems very similar to the stuff that he's doing with MMA. Uh, every time you see those clips of him, like kind of doing the same kind of humor and stuff, I was like, yeah, I could see, I could see how this would work. Um, and it was just good to see Big E again. Um, it's always mm -hmm. good to see him. Um, but I thought all that stuff worked. Uh, the main segment of it. Um, Boy, this was uh this was a lot. This was a lot to process because um I think The Rock did the very smart thing here, starting on the Pat McAfee show and leaning into the heat, not, you know, ignoring it, not bristling at it, immediately shifting into the Cody Crybaby stuff and getting you kind of the first hint that he was gonna turn. And I thought the heel turn in the in the press conference worked. I thought it was good. I thought uh him coming out and opening with the uh the big uh, family tree and throwing two jabs right away. First thing, the Cody crybaby line, but then also throwing in there, hey, there's no doubt here looking at this that there is only one powerful and dominant royal family in wrestling. Very obvious who that was pointing to. Also, it was like the match should be the tribal chief versus the people's champ calling himself the people's champ after all this time. And again, he is the hand-picked corporate guy. You are not the people's champion. Two very, very clear digs at Cody. And then when Cody finally comes out, um, I thought that they handled his stuff well. He showed the fire that we wanted him to show on Friday instead of just accepting it and letting Rock have his match. Um, I thought it was well done. I thought also doing the graphic stuff where um, during the segments where segments of it where it was just Cody off the ring and it was just Rollins, Roman, and the Rock in the ring and the graphics on the side of the ring had Rock and Roman. But then when Cody came out and declared it was his match, it changed. And I was like, that was smart, but I don't think a lot of people are going to pick up on it. Um, so that, that's, that's kind of my thoughts on the entire thing. Like there were things here that I liked, um, but it was just very, very convoluted. And I thought by the end of it, I was like, Okay, so what's the match? <laughs> and so see, that's <laughs> you hit the nail, you hit the nail right on the head. Now, I was excited about this because it was like I was looking forward to it all day, and I dreaded where I'm like, man, I don't want to work. I just sort of read. Let's get to this like now. And I had some buddies, and they're like, 
hey, can we come over? And I'm like, and then I was like talking to my wife. I'm like, she's like, all right. And I'm like showing her messages. And she's like, <laughs> this is just a kickoff show. It's like they're just announcing like what's going to happen. Press conference, like, quote unquote. And she knows what's going on. And she, she's she's a loyal watcher, begrudgingly, I think, at times. But she she's a fan of Dwayne. She likes Cody. More in love with Roman than I would I thought was interesting. Um, I'm like, sure. I had five Phil. Usually I can and it's shocking because she's been a big Dwayne guy. And she's always she likes Cody. It's because like my kids like Cody. And then like Roman came out and she was just like, I'm like, she's like, man, when did he change? I'm like, you just watched him like last week. What is wrong? She's like, he looks different. He's looking really good today. It's just kind of I'm not, I won't swear. I'm, I'm trying to work on my swearing. And then but I the fact that I look at it is I had five buddies who were in and out of wrestling. And they were like, we're interested in this. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, come over. So we're watching. And I kind of gauge on people that don't watch mm-hmm. much. They kind of jump in, they jump out. Mania seasons when you usually can get everyone in. Right. And dead ended. And they were like. What are we getting? Exactly. What's the match? Because what Dave Meltzer said from the Wrestling Observer, Wrestling Observer was correct in the fact that there was supposed to be a very clear direction on where they were going. We think it is Cody and Roman Reigns. Yeah, they announced it. They they put out the they announced it. Paul Levesque went on. I retweeted it on social. I'm like, I'll... I'll I'll pump it out. I'm like, absolutely. I'm like, it's what was announced. But I also came away like, are we match? really, are they really going to do it? Yeah. And like, well, you said, I'll start back. Why Bailey wasn't there. I got no idea. I thought that yeah. was, I'll start there. That was a miscarriage of justice. That Man. wasn't, I could have done without Bianca Belair. I really, cause what was the point of her? I get why they, Normally, I'd get it. She's one of your top stars. She's done stuff w- with us at the zone when we were hyping up a couple big women's boxing matches. She, we, we've reached out to WWE and she's done some stuff with us for that. And, mm-hmm. but in this situation, she's not going to be in this marquee match. Bailey's the one you wanted out there, and I thought they did Bailey and EO wrong there, especially Bailey, because like you said, she won the Rumble, and I thought that was yeah, it's Super Bowl weekend. She's a known 49ers fan. I thought that was a missed opportunity. And you know, and so then you, everyone's going through their stuff, and I'm, and even my my old, my kids come down and they're like, Dad, where's du- where's R- Roman, Cody, and Dwayne? And I'm like, I don't know, but I gotta say about Seth Rollins' suit. Now, I have to give that an A+. I know people are being like, oh, we're not here to talk about that. But you know what? I'm in on that. Listen, I'm Team Rollins over here. Anybody knows me, knows I'm a big Seth Rollins fan. Team Rollins over here. He also said today in the the interview, the soundbite is going around. If he could beat up anybody, curb stomp anybody, it'd be an Aaron Aaron Rodgers. That's my champion right there, man. <laughs> hey, you ain't wrong, man. Because uh, that I'm on that same wavelength, and I'm like, that's a local guy. It's like we got to roll with those. We got to roll with the local guys. And I thought how, and he's the one that I feel like has gotten screwed over the most in this situation. Yes, definitely. You're one of the only ones that is really champion that on social media and losing punk that had to hurt him yes because it was like he in his mind he's like finally i'm getting my true wrestlemania main event i'm getting i'm gonna be headlining night one here we go people are behind this and he's a man alone on the island here yeah I, I think the other big part about Punk getting hurt that kind of hurts this a lot, too, is that it would have meant something if you had Punk, like the biggest biggest star to come back here, bar none, next to Cody. 
and immediately he's in the heavyweight world championship um pitcher that changes everything because now that ma- that match and that belt has prestige to it um you have a big star that wants that belt now we're back to all of these guys walking around like oh, i don't want that belt i want i want roman's belt he just got he's got made the look really really bad here yeah and the booking hasn't done him yeah. right at all it's done him in a, a while service um yeah, and I also don't like that uh, every time these things happen, I, I like the initial stare down with him and Roman when Roman came out and Rollins called for Cody and then uh, Roman comes walking out and they have their short back and forth. Um, but every time they have these back and forths and people are like, yeah, Roman sure got him. I was like, did he though? It seems like he's making a lot of excuses for a guy that um, you're the best, but you did not beat Seth Rollins. You did not beat yeah. him in 2022. You never gave him a rematch. And now you're waltzing around like, ha this guy's in the loser bracket. He isn't a loser, though. He beat you. The entire reason he has that belt is because you wouldn't give him a rematch. <laughs> me and you were sitting. Me, it was it was me, you, Sean Ross Sapp, and your good, more your good friend. I just know Will as an acquaintance, Will Washington, and... I remember the, the four of us just sitting there like, man, you did a DQ finish? Yeah, it never it, went back to wait, it. Wait, wait, it never went back. It was like, that was the obvious match I felt like they should have went with instead of this convoluted title unification that made about zero sense. Because yeah. it really, it just didn't do anything. And I felt they've really done him wrong. You can make a case since that point. You know, I get they wanted to get Cody over. I think that was just, yeah, that was the wrong. He was the wrong guy to do that with. Just yeah, but it took him a lot to get that momentum back. And I'm watching him yesterday, and you see when Roman comes out, and I'm like, all right, I'm into that. Dwayne's just gonna sh- overshadow everyone because whether you like it or not, he's the freaking rock. Yeah, he's going to do that. And then Cody's out there, and it's like, but where I thought he saved himself was at the end. Oh, he came right in, (laughs) and he's like, "I'm getting my not I'm getting mine, but character wise, I'm getting mine." I believe they made him. They made him feel important. A little bit in the grand in the grand scheme of things, I felt like a little bit. I just think he got lost in the segment completely. Mm -hmm. He. He stood in the corner for so long. There were bits of it when Cody was talking, and you could see him off in the distance, just kind of staring off. Even yeah, <laughs> there's just so many. There's so many parts of it where you can see his little reactions, and it's just like, what are they doing with this guy? Like, give him something more than this. Um, like when Rock brought up the uh, family tree, and you can see him looking down, like, what are we doing? Like, why am I here? <laughs> I thought that at a lot of points because I'm like, what is he? What's the role of him here? No, it took I, twenty. It took twenty minutes. That segment went. I watched the you. I watched the video again on their YouTube page. Yeah. Say, and it was about twenty minutes in. Where then it was like, okay, now we know. Here's his purpose. Yeah, he and sat there for a good fifteen minutes, just like just taking what? it, being a whipping boy as well. It, that was the yeah. crazy part about it as well. Roman would be talking to Cody and then just throw a random dig in it at Rollins and he couldn't even respond to it. Like yeah. <laughs> he didn't do anything. He just had to stand there and take it. Um, and so when he does jump in towards the end and even when he jumps in, it doesn't really make sense why he, why he jumps in because no, not at all. It did. It really did. <laughs> Rock, Rock slaps I'm just Cody. Like, what are we, I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah. Rock slaps Cody. And so he's the first one to jump in and jump in Rock's face. But I was like, but why you hate Cody? <laughs> You. Yeah, that's where I was kind of like, they never really kind of made it clear after Survivor Series if they were kosher on the same page. It didn't if they were at least because the whole premise was we're gonna let's get through the Survivor Series and then we'll yeah we'll separate again and you know then like you know Roman I w- you knew where it was going after Roman came out first and i'm like okay i'm like okay i could see where 
we're going here. Dwayne's going to come out. Cody's going to end it. Well, let's see where they – then you kind of had a good feeling where they were going to go. But what surprised me, and I don't know if it did for you, but, you know, Roman got the mixed reaction. The Rock got the mixed reaction. That didn't surprise me as much, but what surprised me, it wasn't all um, butterflies and rainbows for Cody. Cody was getting booed. Cody, there were cheers. Yeah. But there were boos. Yes. And I don't think they expect... Actually, I know people there didn't expect that. Considering everything that had went on, leading into, leading into this, it was... I was thinking, Rock's getting booed out of the building. He ain't getting cheered at all. You know, Roman's, Roman's getting booed out of the building. I'm thinking Cody, Seth's going to get cheered. And I'm thinking Cody's, the crowd, the roof's going to blow off T-Mobile Arena. And it was like, not really. And that, that surprise, that was the biggest, beyond it being, a like you said, a convoluted mess. That was the biggest shock to me that he got booed at all. And it was, yeah, it was pretty mixed. I think the cheer, there were more cheers. But there was a very loud, there was a good contingent that was like, we don't want this either. Um, and it was like, wait, whoa. What, what I they did a, a few, by that. They did a few weird things with Cody here um, that I think helped create this mixed reaction. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but when he first came out, they didn't hit his music. You, you just heard him like tapping the mic and he came mm -hmm. out. And that was kind of awkward because you didn't even know it was Cody at first until the camera uh, scrolled to him. And then... Um, it was an odd decision as well to let him get slapped and then he then couldn't respond to getting slapped. He couldn't react to it because uh, the GMs immediately started holding him back. Um, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, I, I think the issue with it is, yeah, I do think that there is a contingency of fans that they still want this match and it did get a pop. Yeah. But it's kind of it it's, it's kind of the same thing that I pointed out with telling people that this guy's the Royal Rumble winner and he's getting his rematch. Um, once you then dangle the rock match in front of people, people are now bought in like, okay, well, I want this. And so then six days later, you tell them, oh, well, you're not getting that. You're getting the Cody match. And it's just like, oh, but wait, now I wanted that. And so you've, you've kind of confused your fans. And then on top of that, you have everything that happened for six days. You had fans online that were being a little bit too extra. You have like the death threat stuff. You had all of this harassment stuff going around. And then you have... Like we just said, the biggest star, one of the most recognizable names in wrestling, come in and tell you that, no, this guy's not the guy. I'm the guy. I'm the star. His fans are crybabies, and I'm the biggest star. So they're going to side with him. If you don't watch the product regularly, and you're like an Attitude Era fan, you're going to side with The Rock. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so I think that's what happened. I don't think it's necessarily that... Um, the majority is not still on Cody's side. I think the majority still is on Cody's oh, yeah. side, but I think that you've now muddied the waters by introducing the rock match into the mix because now um, you have some people that do want the rock match more. You know, you're spot on. You know, you got you look at it. It's they did this to themselves here. Yes. They did 100, and I don't know how much you talk to people in the company. I, I got friends there and that, that are in the know and, you know, and just talking casually. There were a lot of people there that were like baffled too, but like brought up both points of this of the spectrum, and and I under and I'm I'm like okay, I'm like I get it. They painted themselves into a corner. Yes. You know, when you come out, and there was another glaring thing in this presser. It was the fact that they didn't even, no one no one even bothered to bring this up. It kind of just got either glossed over or they just didn't want to bring it up. You had Cody give up his spot six days ago. Mm -hmm. And... Now magically, 
he's like, I'm picking you, Roman Reigns. Wait, what? Right. That's what the people I was with, even my seven-year-old child figured it out. Second grade. <laughs> if a second grade, and it's not a knock on him, he's he's smarter than most fifth graders at six years. And I even think he's smarter than some adults. He's a very sharp and wise kid and is very in tune. Even he's like, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. Didn't Cody, he's like, Dad, Cody said he was giving his spot to The Rock. And I'm like, yeah. He did. So, Triple H is supposed to be on SmackDown tonight. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. Yes. Because that part has to be addressed. Because the point I would bring up, if I'm Dwayne, if I'm Roman, and Roman alluded to this in his promo. Yeah. You already gave up your spot. I, I'm going this way. But it was glossed over 97% of the rest of the remainder of the 20 plus minutes that was left. They still ha- are in a corner here. Sort of. Because yeah. you have a lot of, there is a lot, like you said, what are we getting? Yes, they announced this. I just have a feeling we're going to see a lot of this. Yeah, I, I do think we're going to get a lot of swerving. Um, but yeah, I because you set up so many things. I mean, you basically showed us that Rock is abusing his power. Um, yeah. That is set up in this segment. And Roman has been abusing his power as the main champion for two, three years. And yeah. so, I mean, in my head canning, I feel like that's why Rollins got upset. And that's why Rollins stepped in. And at the end of the segment, that's why he's saying, you guys can't just do whatever you want because he's been watching this guy do this for three years. And now you've got a guy that comes in with even more power because he's a part of the board of directors mm-hmm. and he's doing it too. And it's like, no, you two guys cannot do whatever you want. He made his choice. He's the Royal Rumble winner. It's his decision. You guys don't have any say so in this. And so I understand that part about it. Um, I think the best line that Cody ga- uh, Rollins gave, by the way, is the is the one that he wasn't mic'd up for. And you had to really pay attention to hear it. Mm-hmm. It's when he was walking out and Roman walks up on him and he was just like, I can beat you any day of the week. I've done it every single time. And I was like, why didn't you let him say that on mic? Exactly. Exactly. It, it was just like. And this kind of leads into what we're talking about now, like booking that they, they did. Because now it's like you got a couple different matches that people want to see. Mm-hmm. On one hand, you got people want to see Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. Yes. You got another, like in another segment of the audience wants to see uh, Roman Reigns and The Rock. You got another segment of the audience that wants to see Roman and Rock against Seth and Cody. Yeah. I feel like then the you got people, there. Then you got people that want to see The Rock and Cody. Based off yeah. slapping the freaking bejesus out of them and knocked them down to knock them down to a knee. Yeah. And then you got people that want to see Seth and Roman and yeah. Seth and The Rock. So they booked themselves into six matches. <laughs> a lot of dangling plot lines. How and I would want to see all six. Yeah. Not as a as a fan, and in, in in being in media, being a part of this in a very 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 small way that we are. I want to see all of that. I want all the smoke, <laughs> per se, in this situation. I want it all, Phil. Give me every piece of the pie. I want to see it all. So do you? But think- what do they? But what do they do here? So. I, that was my biggest question because it seems like they're setting up the tag match because you had yeah. Rock and Roman leave together. Um, mm-hmm. So it seems like they're aligned now, or at least they have a common enemy in Cody Rhodes. Uh, but that mean, that could mean anything. That could lead to triple threat match. Um, that could lead to, uh, boy, this is my least favorite of the options. Um, this could lead to a winner-take-all match with all four of them. Um, I really, really hope they don't do that. But yeah. I... But you did set up the possibility of having a fatal four way. Um, yeah. I wouldn't want to do them to do that. But I mean, you've had Rollins standing there for this entire segment, so he's in it, <laughs> whether he wants to be or not. He's in it. 
he's in it for the four way is the least, but it would make sense. But I could, it would make sense, but I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it either. But the I can you can make like you said you can make sense of it though, based of off of what we saw. Now you could do that four way in Australia. Okay, and I know Seth's hurt. But, he says he's gonna be ready in a few weeks. By Australia, though, he just said a few weeks. He said that to CBS Sports, CBS Sports Radio, mm-hmm. earlier in the week. A few weeks could be the beginning of March. A few weeks could be a month from now. That could be two weeks from now, in front of right now about forty five thousand people in Perth, Australia. Mm-hmm. I just don't. You don't have to have him do much. You can have Cody do a lot of the match. He can kind of come in, do his Seth Rollins spots. Kind of, you can, there's ways I think they can work around it. And I think Seth would feel, I think Seth would feel okay. Yeah. I remember saying to you when this all, when Rock first came, and remember me and you were messaging each other and you're everyone, because everyone was like, oh, it's Australia and they're doing it here. And I'm like, that ain't happening. Me and you were both on the same page. Never made, sense. never made sense. Never gonna happen. No. Now, I think there's a 50 50 chance they're gonna wrestle as a team in Australia. I, I would do it there. Is is Roman gonna work Elimination Chamber? He wasn't scheduled as of I asked last week, and I was told no. But we've all been kind of even everybody, and I will say every member of the media has been been kind of played along here. They, I don't think there'll be enough people to admit that, but, and I'll give WWE credit for that because they have intentional or not. I mean, and that's for here nor there, but I think they've kind of. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's did spun. I, I hate saying the word pivot, but I, I in a way they did pivot. I think they did. I think this wasn't the whole intention. I, I, I think they had to, honestly. I, I, I think with the response, um, you had to go back to the Cody match in some way. Now, I don't know what that means for WrestleMania because um, this very well could be a swerve as well, and they could add rocks to that match. I don't know. Um, maybe they're going to do that match on night two, and they're going to do Rock versus Roman on night one. I don't know. Um, I have a hard time seeing Roman Reigns bo- work both nights. I think that he should. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna sell this as WrestleMania 40, 40th anniversary of your biggest show of the year, your main champion should be very present. And so, I don't think it's a terrible idea for him to work both nights. Um, but do it's I hard. believe that? It's hard. You know, I've said that. that I think that it's hard not to cut you up, but I just think. For any of those four, as great athletes as they are, Mm -hmm. in their own right, they are still, at the end of the day, human beings. Right. You're asking a lot out of those four. Say they do the tag match, and then say Seth faces – say they do an elimination chamber. I don't know if they're doing one. Someone asked a couple of people last week, I'm like, I don't know why I haven't even brought it up. I've been too busy all day to even ask. But say Seth, they do a men's chamber, Seth will face the winner. You would be asking Seth, Cody, Roman to work back to back nights for three of your three of the four guys in that match. That would just emotionally of what they would go through. Because you got to figure, if you're headlining night one, you're in there, people are going to watch night one. Because it's The Rock. Yes. There's just going to be more eyeballs. Like people are going to hate that. Tough shit, that's a part of life. <laughs> you got to deal with it. Then you'd go into night two, Roman and Cody. I don't see Roman working two nights either. I would be... I don't either. I would be more apt that they would go uh, Roman wrestling once. But what do you what is what do they do here? 
at the end of it all, I have no idea. We'll we'll start here. I'll start. Actually, we'll just go right here. No offense to you, so. What is The Rock doing at WrestleMania? He uh, is wrestling. He's made it clear. He's definitely wrestling. He is definitely wrestling. I asked last night just to be again sure, and they're like, he is one hundred percent on this show. Period. Yeah. End of story. Yeah, I don't think there's any scenario. I've seen people say that he'll be like a special enforcer, or like special guest referee. That sucks. I don't see that happening at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I think he's wrestling. I don't think you put this much hype around this guy finally coming back to WWE, and then you just put him in a special guest referee spot. That that's my, that doesn't make any sense. Um, I think he's gonna wrestle. Um, it sure seems like he's wrestling Roman in some form. I don't know, man. I don't know if they're going to do the one-on-one match. I don't know if they're going to throw this tag match in there. I don't know if we're doing a triple threat match. It seems like he's going to be in this in some way. Um, I just don't know how you get there. Uh, My question for you, the follow-up, good reporters follow-up, as you know. Do you put him on night one? Because I would not. He's the biggest star in the world. He's the biggest star in that match. No offense to anybody. The more eyeballs, would, regardless of what he's doing, I was shocked Austin main event in night one. Mm-hmm. But Rock has been in this. This is no offense to Steve. And Austin did both nights in Dallas. He technically he did, did, a, yeah, did a run in. and I would be very, just because there are always more eyeballs on night two. That's just because the bigger match is always on night two. If you looked at, you look at how they've done this. Mm-hmm. Night two has been the bigger match. Yes. No offense to anybody. That's just. You look at. You look at thirty eight, Roman, and regardless of what you want to say about Steve and Kevin, no one thought Steve was wrestling. If they had announced two weeks before and even the raw beforehand, if you announced stone cold, Steve Austin's returning to the ring at WrestleMania 38, that's the bigger match that would headline night two. But the bigger match was Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar last year. The bigger match was Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. Rightfully so that headline night two. I do not see him headlining night one. I would be very, very, yeah. very, very surprised. No one has said anything. I would be very shocked. And I think that would be – I wouldn't agree with that decision just based on – no. and I know Cody's the one that's going to be around. I get mm-hmm. it. But I think – I hate triple threats. I hate four ways. <laughs> I don't. I don't hate the idea of a triple threat. I just think in this, I think in this option that does a disservice to both stories because you have a big enough story to tell with Rock and Roman, and then you mm-hmm. have a completely different story to tell with Cody and Roman. So I think trying to merge them into one match, I think does a disservice to both stories. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think you, if you're gonna do it, just do both matches. Um, I it, whether that means trying to get both matches on this card or just waiting until next year to do another one. Yeah. It seems pretty unfathomable to me that you would chase this rock match for four years and have it in the palm of your hand and then go oh we're just going to do a wrestlemania 41 you never know what could happen in a year um you this bring is the up, busiest man in the world like i mm, <laughs> th- and th- this and you hit god we're all on the same we're all definitely on the same page here because that was why when we were talking about earlier i didn't care I wasn't, oh, my God, Cody's not getting his match. That wasn't on my mind because, like you said, they've been trying to get this match inside the ring for four years. No offense to Cody. None. I get the fans have been on the ride. I get it. I get it. The fans are what make the business. The fans are what makes keeps us employed. By reading and watching and listening and reading and doing everything. They're a very integral part of the business. Yeah. And they definitely are. I'll never take that away from the fans. But what I will take away is the fact that 
that's your that that's the golden goose. It's not like, hey, Dwayne, you know what we're gonna shift? Yeah, we've been trying to do this before, but you know what? There's this guy over here. Yeah, he's been doing he's been doing really well for us for the past two years. Yeah, we're still gonna go. We're gonna go that way. You can wait till next oh. year in Minneapolis. I that I I no, that no, not at all. And and it's gonna be his final match. He's not maybe. It's fifty one. Yeah, he's a guy that has very high standards. He doesn't want to go in there, and it was the same thing with Steve. Doesn't want to be anything less than his best. He is not going to go in there at 58 and do another match. Yeah. You can maybe get to next year, but you don't know his schedule. His schedule is so in flux. He's carving out time to make this work. Yeah. This is the best. This is the best opportunity to do the match. And that's kind of why I am in the camp of. If you can, just do Rock versus Roman on one night and then have Cody versus Roman or Cody versus the winner on the second night. Uh, because I don't think you're going to get a better chance at this Rock match with Roman. Uh, <laughs> I think you got to take this opportunity while you can. The story is there. And I actually think they made the story even more interesting with the kickoff because um, you did some interesting stuff with uh, the pecking order here where you yeah. see... Soon as uh, Cody uh, offended The Rock and talked about their family, Rock was the guy that stepped forward and Mm -hmm. Roman fell in line. We have not seen Roman fall in line in three years. He's never been in the presence of any family member in storyline that has more power than him and is a bigger star. And I think that immediately makes Roman more interesting. I don't think I'm far off as well in saying that I can see the semblance of the face turn coming for Roman, man. It's it. I, it, there were specific parts of that, of that press conference where I was like, you can see they're angling towards turning this guy face eventually. Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's definitely, you could see. And that was, it was so subtle. Yes. That you have to be really paying attention for one to see that. And I just, I don't know what they do. Because I just, with his schedule, I just don't see asking two years out of him at this stage. It was easier 10 years, 11 years ago when they, when they locked him in for three WrestleManias. Right. That was where, okay, he was still busy, but he was also 12 years young, thir- almost 13 years younger. He was still not even 40. Right. That is a lot easier at 38 than it is at currently 51. You're asking him for another year. You don't know if his body can hold up. I'm not saying you don't know if his body can hold up, but keep his body as great as it is right now, which is quite astounding. It is a worry. It is definitely a worry. It is a worry. Just looking at the two matches he had and he hurt himself. Right. Both moves not his fault. Crap does happen. Yes. That, I, it's not like he didn't put into work and not training, not having a ring and taking bumps and doing match, matches and stuff like that. You know, and I told the guy, I think adrenaline plays a big part in that too because you had the two biggest event, two of the biggest WrestleManias in all, of all time, and he was the focal point of each show. I just don't know, like, like it, singles matches both nights makes sense. There's a bunch of different ways they can go here. I just don't. Yeah. I still think you got to do the one on one match because why are you going to do a tag match for a four year story that you you could say the story even goes back to the 2015 Royal Rumble to where he saved his butt saved his ass. Yeah. And Wasn't he got booed. And he got booed out of the goddamn building was, in correct. Philadelphia. Yeah, mind in you, Philadelphia. Um, I don't know. I just think that uh, it's hard. I, this is I think hard one. I think the tr- the tag match is intriguing, but that's mm-hmm. a very New Japan way of doing things as well. Doing like the storyline with the tag match, and then having the actual 
main events and like the singles matches coming out of the tag match the next day. And I mean, honestly, having the having the Rock Roman match night one and then having a winner face them is also a way that New Japan would do things. And that's why I kind of don't see WWE doing it. That would be kind of a different approach to the way they do things. Um, but I do think that that's the best option at this point. I do think like getting both matches in, if you're trying to sell WrestleMania 40 as the biggest WrestleMania in the history of the event, and you're trying to do a celebration of your entire history of WrestleManias, it makes sense to have the biggest star of this era facing one of the biggest stars of the Attitude Era. And then you're positioning Cody as the future of the company. It makes sense to do both. Mm -hmm. Then what do you do? do you, when would you do a tag match? Hey, you could. I mean, the tag. You know, the, ta the tag match has to happen here because you, could do a you tag just match don't have time, though. You could do a tag match well, on TV. Really? I think would you, you can. Would you put it on TV? Yeah. Throw it on Fox? I would put that match on TV for certain. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think that has to be a pay per view match. Hmm. I got a time they can do that actually. Do you want to hear the time? Sure. I think you'll I think you'll get very excited here. I think the fans won't, but I, I know I will and I know you will. How about March the twenty fifth? The All State Arena. Chicago, Illinois. I'm just throwing my fantasy hat on here. I'm throwing I I'll I'll play Paul Levesque for a second. TV's not, not a bad idea. I, I, Chicago's I think, the biggest market day, and this is part homerism. Yeah. But this is also Chicago's your biggest market. Yeah. I, on the road to WrestleMania, Chicago is your biggest market that is on the docket for TVs. It is. That's just, we can, you can, and anyone can look at the schedule and you can see they're not going to LA. They're not going to New York. I think New York's got, I think MSG's got a house show. Yeah, they're not going to put that match on a house show unless you do a live special. Then okay, I can kind of, I can get at that point because it's the garden. And that you could do that if you're willing to make that a special and spend the extra money for. I know they don't like doing those shows at the garden just because of the union situation in New York, and I get it. But TV's not a bad idea either, because I don't think people are going to get up at four in the morning on February twenty fourth. Just to watch a tag team, they no. could. I mean, they could I think, put it there. They'd be I bad, think, but they could. Yeah, uh, people are gonna watch Elimination Chamber, but I don't think you put a match like that there because I think if if I'm gauging what you can do with that tag match correctly and the storytelling things you can do with that match, um, I think you just use that as part of the build to WrestleMania. I like, man, you're. I like. I'm in on that idea. Yeah, because to me... I am in on that. Because I think the story here is going into that tag match is how can they coexist? And you're going to think going into that match with Cody and Rollins being the rivals, you're going to wonder how can they coexist? But I think the story there is how can Rock and Roman coexist? Because we've seen Roman for three years be the leader and you don't know how he is going to follow the Rock I think people need to remember too. And I was just thinking of this while you were talking on the road, the WrestleMania 18, when we were getting to Hogan and the rock, the raw before WrestleMania on one corner, you had stone cold, Steve Austin and the rock. Mm -hmm. And on the opposite corner, you had Hulk Hogan, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, the rock and Hogan interacted in that match. The only time on live TV that you ever got to see Hogan and Austin in a match. That could happen. It made me think of that now because there is, I know it was 22 years ago and I get it and 100% get it. But I, I'm in on that. Pop a big rating. Yeah. Get many, the most eyeballs. That's easily three million viewers, easy, maybe, if not more. 
maybe you can go higher. Say they decided, hey, we're going to put it on SmackDown. Now you're talking four, three and a half, four million people? I think going that route isn't absolutely, I think that's a very, very, very good idea. Now to put a bow on this whole entire situation from yesterday. What are you most looking forward to now that we're now on? We are now officially on. To me, this is now the official we're on the road with the WrestleMania. Uh, now that we've solidified that he's made a decision, I, I want to see how Cody responds. Because um, before it's kind of felt like he's along for the ride because he – he had this journey up to up to the point at Royal Rumble and up to the point when he won. And then after that, he just kind of took a back seat and he's been just standing around like, oh, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. And he's looked wishy-washy. Cody Rhodes is at his best when he's driven and he has a motivation to do something. And I think after getting slapped in that press conference, he is eventually going to give a fire promo. And that's what I'm looking forward to. And if it were me, I would hearken back to his feud with Dusty. And I would say, enough. I am here to bring about the death of the Attitude Era. I am an, uh, enough. <laughs> I am the future of this company. Stop going back and, and bringing in these part-timers and these old-timers. I am the future. Do it, Cody. You know you want to. <laughs> Go. And, and again, you could tie wow. that back to so many things. Him. Didn't he also bust the throne in that same feud? <laughs> reference that. All you got to do is reference that promo. That's the moneymaker, buddy. Now, I know they might not want to do that because they might not want to wrestle, might not want to go back to big AEW stuff, but I think that's the easy pick here is that this guy has positioned himself as the guy that feels like the Attitude Era is overrated. Because then he's bashing his brother. Listen. Brother was a brother was a big part of the. What if we see Dustin here? Yeah, I don't know, but I to me I think that that's the pool. If you're gonna go with animosity between The Rock and Cody, I think the easiest pool is him taking jabs at the Attitude Era. Wow, man, I hadn't even thought of that that's freaking brilliant you're a smart man you are very uh, what i'm looking forward to most is just see how they do with cody i really because yeah. you know he's the future yes you see even though he, he said that he's in his mid-30s but he's the one you really gotta come out here looking good and i thought they did even though I still think they made it a convoluted mess. Yes. They I wouldn't have done that. Still some gaping holes, but I think you can eat those are the pot some of the potholes have been fixed. I'm intrigued to see what the Paul Levesque says on SmackDown. I'm as we are recording this before SmackDown, so everyone don't get upset. <laughs> I'm intrigued to see how they go about that. Because I think that another, maybe another pothole, I would hope we're not creating more potholes. Yeah, I hope so. I, I'm, I'm hoping not <laughs> in this situation because I think they, they got a real chance here to make Cody not just a star – but to that Roman Reigns, megastar, the guy, you can make him John Cena. I think you can really, I think you could really, really do that. And, but they have to be very careful here on how they go about it because you don't want, you're going to have to find a balance of not putting so much emphasis on the rock you can't put so much emphasis on roman reigns and i think how i want to see is how are you going to balance because i think they go the route you brought up 
in going with two matches. Mm-hmm. How you find that delicate balance of going with two matches just to make sure that Cody's still the predominant focus. That's going to be what I'm intrigued by the most. If that's the route they go, how do you balance? Because it's two big matches. Yeah. How do you make sure both get the equal amount of time, but making the Cody story a little bit above it, above the rock and roll? That's the balance I want to see. Because if he doesn't come out of this, and you won't know the full aftermath until after WrestleMania. But you can get a pretty good indication going forward. Because you I saw it with Daniel Bryan, you kind of you already knew this wasn't gonna last. Vince did it to appease the fans, and then he got the moment, and then which you could never take away from him. And I've asked him, and he still brings it up. He's very proud of the moment, but he knew his shelf life on top wasn't going to last let's see if they can do that here and get fans to the point where like we know this is going to be the guy for the next two three four five years to come but we also don't know if he signed a contract a new deal yeah that is and i think point. dad has something to play with this situation too and i think there's also and i don't know this and i haven't asked I don't even know if other people have, but last I know he hasn't signed that deal. And I wonder if him not signing the deal, hmm. you got to look at his contract runs out as a, if it hasn't, if nothing's been signed. And I don't know if it, anything has. Is there reluctancy? Will there be reluctancy? I'm being like, do we really want you to be the guy headlining our biggest show? Do you're winning you turning around and saying Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown. I'm going back to the company I helped create. And now I'm going to be a bigger guy there. And that company is going to go take off because I'm back in that company. Look what I did here. There's a lot, there's a lot at play here. And I'm very intrigued at how they He's the focus, but if he hasn't signed this deal, and he, the last time I asked, he still had, and that was about a month ago. They were, and I know Sean Ross Sapp has said, eh, nothing's been signed yet. We haven't heard anything. So mm-hmm. I think that's something you also really got to look out for here. The if idea. that contract hasn't been signed, I would be very reluctant to have him go over my biggest mate right now, my biggest attraction and one of the biggest attractions in the history of wrestling. Co- Cody has not signed that contract, which opens so many other story things that you could do as well. Uh, Cody Rose coming to the top of the ramp and, and proceeding to sit down and go, Brock, I don't hate you. I just hate the idea that you are the best because you are not the best. I am the best. And when I beat Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, I am going to take the WWE championship with me back home <laughs> Wouldn't that, be something? that would be incredible <laughs> i just i don't i don't see that happening at all i just think it would be a funny, no, <laughs> it'd be a funny coincidence it, but he hasn't signed it it would be that would be i think phil would be i think phil brooks would be laughing his butt off i think that would be pretty i think he'd find that quite funny but that's something i think that's you really i'm very intrigued by too yeah if he hasn't signed a deal by the time I get to WrestleMania, I'm having Roman Reigns pin him right in the middle of the ring. And what if now? What if that happens? I know we're kind of going far out here, and we'll talk about this more in the future. But this kind of just really piqued my mind here. Could they? Could WWE be like, regardless of the contract signed, because they keep talking a lot about Hogan's record. And that's September. Could you see, after all of the We Want Cody, the Cody Crybabies, the slap heard around the world, what if they beat him again in the middle of the ring? 
that would be oh man you're talking about a colossal mistake man I what if they beat be him right mistake. in the middle that'd be a big mistake in my opinion but what if he hasn't signed a new deal by then I know it's a long time between now and April a lot of things can change it changes daily and weaves a lot's changed just in six days but if they're like, hey, we're going this route. Do you beat them in the middle? I would. Because then you control. And it goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. The brand. No one's bigger than the brand. They're not allowing that anymore. To not let one individual or individuals be bigger than the WWE. AEW makes that mistake, and that's kind of – that's hurt AEW plenty. But could – I think it's something you got to think about. Here. It's another intriguing thing on this road to WrestleMania, Phil. Something I didn't even think about till we just start – you, you were going on and talking, and I'm like, what do we do here? Yeah, I don't know. Um <sighs> I don't think you. I don't think he should lose two years in a row. I think I, having having your first back to back Royal Rumble winner since 1998, and then having him lose back to back years. Oh, I would not do that. He <laughs> could. I would get it if he hasn't signed a deal. If he has, if he does sign his deal, there. I know there's an offer on the table. If he doesn't. Knowing Ari Emanuel just a little bit, just from interactions I've had with him since he's own Endeavor is owned the UFC. Look at how they're freezing out Conor McGregor. And not Yeah. If and this and I know pro wrestling fans will get mad at this one. I know the fans will get mad at me when I say this as well, and that's tough cookies. Conor McGregor's a bigger star than Cody Rhodes. And if they're icing Conor McGregor out because they want him to sign a new deal and he just wants to get these two fights in and see what happens, whether it's retire or go back to boxing, take a lucrative boxing match on Manny Pacquiao. If they're doing that to Conor McGregor, they're going to have no problem doing that to one Cody Rhodes. As much as I like Cody, it would be like, sorry, kid. You're going to be going on your back, staring at the lights. That would be god off. That would be tragic. That'd You're be going to be really looking bad. up at the lights at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and about 70,000 people pissed off. Yeah. Cody's a smart guy. But no, that's it's something I think we definitely need to think about. Phil, I know I we said 25 minutes, and I don't know how this went this long, and my apologies. Where, where can fans find your, your writing? Where can fans find the podcast? Uh, you can find my writing at Bleacher Report. Um, you can, of course, find Grapsity every Saturday at noon Eastern time on Fightful's YouTube channel um, that is hosted by myself and Righteous Reg. Every now and then we'll have a special guest as well. Um, yeah, tune in this uh, Saturday. I think we have a guest lined up still. Ooh, okay, okay. I think we do. But uh, My favorite podcast. Fun. I don't listen to many. Appreciate you. And I always tell you when I'm when that I'm, I'm I, you guys are that I hate. I don't even like. I, I love plugging good people doing good stuff. And I don't listen to many wrestling podcasts. I try to. I keep it very like I listen to a lot of fightful stuff. Because I think I, what Sean is doing. I think Sean and Jimmy Van are doing some really really good stuff. And I remember when you guys went out. I'm like, all right, here we go. And you guys, you guys crush it every Saturday. And Guys, don't eat will either. I won't tell them that you said that, though. I didn't say that. You said that. I won't. I won't tell them. I don't have to tell you. Said that at no, all. No, I, I love no. Will's a great guy. Will's doing awesome at AEW, and I'm very. I know we're both very proud of him. But Phil, always a. This is the first time we've done this together, and this has definitely been a pleasure. Thank you so much for the time today, man. It means a lot. We're on the road to WrestleMania. We don't know where it's going to go. You can follow this podcast on, you can watch, this will be up on the YouTube channel. Just hit hit the subscribe button by going to Walkway to Fight Club. Hit that subscribe button. we got a, a couple of very interesting interviews coming. One with the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Moose. And we got one, and I didn't even tell you this. Tyrus, 
that was very I will say I came away pleasantly surprised. I had a misconception. I had a conception going in. And I came away very pleasantly surprised. As we talked about his new venture with Outkick, we talked about his talked a little bit about his time in the NWA, a little bit about TNA, more about like family stuff. We talked about just about life and a very intriguing ending. At least I thought I felt it was intriguing when we talked about Vince McMahon and everything going on with Vince. So it would make, that'll be out within the next week to 10 days. But Moose will be out early next week. This podcast will be up early, either later on tonight or on Saturday morning. It's available on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, and all your favorite podcasting platforms. For Phil Lindsay, I'm Steve Mielhausen. Talk to you guys later.